this up. The first step is to add a hue and saturation layer. And we're going to bring the saturation slider down to zero. And then when adjusting the lightness, we're looking to maximize the contrast between the light and the dark. So just set this accordingly to your image. And in my case, I didn't have to adjust the lightness too far. Once you're happy with this, we're going to add a brightness and contrast layer. And then from here, we're going to maximize the contrast and then adjust the brightness until we have a clear definition between the white and the black. This will vary depending on the image that you're using. Next, we're going to go to adjustments and select curves. And then using two points on the graph, we're going to make an S shape, which you can see significantly increases the contrast. Once you're happy with this, we're going to select all of our layers and press Ctrl E to merge them. That's Command E if you're on Mac. And then we're going to come up to Filter and select Filter Gallery. Our first effect is found under the Sketch tab and it is called Reticulation. Now the figures that you use will vary depending on the size of your image and the contrast, so I can only recommend using these settings as a baseline, so keep this in mind. I do however recommend setting your density to 0 and your foreground level to a low number and your background level anywhere around 20 to 30. Next we're going to add another filter layer. Our next filter is going to be green and it can be found under the textures tab. With green I recommend a mid to low intensity with a contrast around 50. We're looking for a low visible green with high contrast, but then again just adjust according to your image. Once again we're going to add a new filter layer, this time we're using film green which can be found under the artistic tab. Just like before we're going to keep the green to a minimum but increase our highlight area and lower the intensity. And for the final time we're going to add one more filter layer, this time we're going to use halftone pattern that can be found under sketch. And then, as a baseline, we're going to have the contrast up at 50, but adjust the size according to the size of your image and the size of halftone that you're looking for. And once you're happy with it, we're going to select OK and come out of the filter gallery. So that is the halftone effect, but now I'm going to show you how to take it a step further and add a gradient map. Okay, so first, we're going to add a gradient map layer. And then open up the gradient. You can choose from the presets and they'll probably do the job that you're looking for, but I'm personally going to make my own red kind of gradient. So you can see me adding points to the gradient. All you have to do to do that is click below the bar where you want to add your points. And the more points you add, the more diverse the gradient will be. So yeah, there it is. And just to show you, the, the presets are actually very good. So, especially the reds, I really like these colours. You can see you kind of get this pop, pop art kind of effect. But yeah, that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching.